Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about the Flax Engine. Now this is a new competitor to the likes of Unity, Unreal, Unigine, definitely a challenging task in 2021, but since it was released back last year, it has come a long way, and we are talking about it again today because it just got a new release. Flax Engine 1.2 was just released. So first we're going to go hands-on, show you quickly what Flax Engine looks like, and then we'll go back from there. So you can see uh, one of the demos for Flax Engine, this is Flax Engine in action with the graphics sample and you can get an idea of the kind of graphical capability of this particular engine uh, as we run around in this particular sample now I would love to see a real showcase example uh, come out that uh, really shows off the engines graphics capability because these don't really they show the capabilities of it they're good tutorial um, sites and so on but they're not really showcases so I'd love to see that come up uh, but as you can see uh, it's pretty straightforward in composition. You create a number of different items in your scene. Those scenes can have other properties attached to them. You can add scripts in. Basically, all that you see here, the player script and so on, these are attached scripts in. These are components that are attached to your character as well. So it uses a traditional component-based approach. You've got things built in like a terrain editor and so on. In terms of scripting languages, you have the option between C++, yes, C++ for a scripting language, uh, C Sharp, as well as their own visual scripting language, which is actually pretty nice. You get an idea of what some of the components available are over here. So you got full UI system built in, you got physics built in, and so on. So that is a quick, quick hands-on with the Flax editor. I've actually done uh, some more in-depth uh, projects in the past. So if you want to check out Flax in more detail, uh, those uh, videos are available on the channel. I, I will link some of them from the linked article down below. Uh, but yeah, that is Flax uh, in a nutshell. Now we're going to go on over back to the website, and we'll take first a look at uh, the feature set of Flax itself. Then we're going to look at what is new in Flax 1.2. And there's actually quite a bit new in this release. If you want to check it out, available at FlaxEngine.com. Available as a free download. This one works on a royalty basis. I think it's a 5% royalty, the same as uh, Unreal Engine and CryEngine. Um, and you can see here, the feature sets are right here. All the source code is available. Uh, you can do seamless C-sharp and C++ scripting, automatic draw calls, batching, and instancing. Every asset uses async content streaming by default, cross-platform support. Uh, and this actually has been proven out, which is a good thing from the 1.2 release. GPU light map baking. Uh, there's a visual scripting language, VFX tools, nested prefabs, localization tools, um, gameplay globals for technical artists. So you can set things up and then have your artist tweak things as you want them in the scenes without having to get into the code. Uh, networking, uh, open world tools, hot reloading of C Sharp and C++ in the editor. Uh, full source code is available, direct communication and help from the engine devs and lightweight development. So you can clone and compile this guy in less than three minutes. Oh, it's 4%, sorry. 4% commission after you make 25,000 per quarter. So you can make 100 grand a year. I guess 25 per quarter is actually different than 100K a year. Uh, but you can make $25,000 um, $25, uh, in three months uh, before you even not just need to start paying a royalty. And then it is 4%. Uh, so that is the kind of overview of Flax features themselves. Now we're going to get into the Flax 1.2 release. Uh, so I will, of course, link this in the linked article down below as well. So the number of new things were actually kind of mentioned in that previous release. We now have localization tools, vehicles, networking, a job system, and hundreds of bug fixes. Kind of funny. People have been waiting for a job system in um, Unity as part of the DOT system for like, what, four years now? Uh, they have one in the 1.2 release. So 1,100 commits, 60 pull requests. And now one of those things I was mentioning earlier on, and this is actually a really nice feather in their cap, they have a cross-platform game that's being published very soon, um, and it's coming to Steam, PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. So once you've got proof that your engine can hit all of those platforms, that is definitely a big deal. So congratulations to the uh, Kostka team, Nedgecraft, uh, on your release, and it's cool to see that Flax now has a game across uh, many different consoles. Proof that it actually can do so. So, new in this particular release, there's support for vehicles. This is in your physics side of things. Uh, so, you can set up custom physical shapes, wheels, and engine setups. They're using NVIDIA physics to drive the simulation and expose lots of configurable properties to tweak the vehicles. Also, unofficially, cars and flags drive better than in Cyberpunk 2077. That's a bit of a shot, but I, I can't really argue with it either. Uh, so, now there's physical vehicle support uh, in the physics system. 
And we've got Nintendo Switch support, uh, part of this announcement here. Now this actually isn't here, it's coming soon. So they're working on Nintendo Switch platform support. Very soon, Flax will be available for Switch developers. Inform you once it's ready via our dev blog. So uh, not quite completely public yet, but definitely nice to see uh, Switch support coming. Another big deal here is there is now low-level networking support. Previously, you had to use like a C-sharp external library or something to do networking. Um, so they're bringing more features in a networking or multiplayer games. Implemented a low-level networking system featuring network peers for creating multiplayer sessions with network message transport layer. Default network layer uses eNet with the possibility to use any library you want, such as Valve Socket, Steam. Relay, Steam P2P, Photon, Real-Time, etc. Um, together, this released an open source network sample. So if you want to check that out, there is a sample available. And there is also a step-by-step -step tutorial on networking in Flax Engine. So networking support is definitely a nice one to have. Another one that we have here is localization. So if you're targeting multiple languages, you have multiple string sets based off of different languages that are out there. Uh, there's now tools in place for creating those uh, directly inside here. Uh, so in 1.2, they ship new localization tools for game internationalization. Uh, this includes uh, UI language localization value culture, so numbers, currency, date formatting, and creating a translation for different language, um, languages, added a new localization setting that is dashboard with lots of utilities such as adding new locales, searching localized uh, ow, uh, strings in code or content, uh, and you can see the, the editor with its live preview available there. So you can do your UI in multiple languages. You could write, you know, character text, whatever. Uh, they, there's support here for switching between all these different languages. Now, I love that English Canadian is actually a language. Um, and then we got new editor icons, uh, as you can see right there. Uh, the job system is in place. Uh, so this is definitely nice. Uh, this is sort of what the job system from... Uh, Unity is supposed to be all about. It allows you to make massive parallel performing stuff. Uh, example of 5,000 animated models playing animation and being rendered at a stable 60 frames per second on an i5 CPU. Uh, job system runs a worker thread per CPU core to run extensive computations asynchronously. For more advanced calculations used by gameplay systems or engine systems, we implemented the task graph. It can be used to parallelize games even better. Plus, it supports dependencies between async systems. So this is a way of making your code massively parallelizable. Parallelizable, I guess I missed a word there. Uh, there is a new profiler in place, the Tracy Profiler. There is now support for texture streaming. Uh, streaming assets contains texture groups for managing texture quality and streaming options at runtime. Every texture asset can define the texture group it belongs to. It can be used to strip um, textures resolutions when cooking for a mobile switch or to implement dynamic texture quality in the game menu. Also, Flax will reduce the quality of textures that are not rendered for some time. Uh, so on. There's also now a tutorial showcasing that. We also have AMD's Fidelity Effects Super Resolution. This is a way of basically upscaling your resolution to get uh, better graphic quality at a higher frame rate. Um, cutting edge super optimized spatial unsampling technology that produces impressive image quality at fast frame rates. It's sort of taking over the world right now. Um, but I think you need to visit the a special repository to get access to it. And then we've got a number of other smaller features here. Nine slice sprites uh, for UI. This is a way of basically cutting a button up into here, 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 and here. And once you've cut it up into those nine different pieces, you can scale that button infinitely and it will grow smoothly. That's a nine slice. Uh, new C++ docs and tutorials. Ability to show, hide, uh, GUI, and debug. Uh, draw shapes, daily source builds. That's actually kind of nice. So if you want, you can actually live your life on the wild side without having to do builds yourself. Optimized editor game CPU usage when idle, delayed node, delay node for visual scripting, faster scene opening, animation asset preview, uh, support for C-sharp objects and structures as visual script or animation graph parameters. That's actually pretty nice. Should give you nice integration between C-sharp and visual scripting. Tons of new APIs for easier game scripting. Uh, both Vulkan and D3D12 rendering backends are way more stable in large worlds. New temporal anti aliasing, modular animated character support, um, change default update rate to 60 frames per second, and debug view for collision geometry. Uh, definitely useful when you're setting up and, and debugging uh, how your bounding shapes work for your physical objects. And that is that. Now, interestingly enough, I do not have a link for the full change log. I'm assuming they're talking about the full release notes available here. I will link them as well. Uh, so you can kind of go into, it's pretty much the, oh no, we got more detail here. Okay, uh, so you can get full details of what changed in this release. And it's a fairly substantial release for sure, as you can see there. Uh, so definitely nice to see. I will link all of this stuff relevant in the linked article down below. So if you want to go ahead and check out Flax Engine, uh, definitely a interesting looking project, especially one of the things that's really going to be appealing 
is it's sort of like a unity like experience but it's much much lighter weight and again i think this is actually a pretty big deal that it's now been officially vetted on a number of different platforms so it's one thing to say that you could target multiple platforms but to actually show that you've done it that's normally a pretty big deal uh, so that is Flax Engine 1.2. Uh, let me know what you think of this update. Pretty decent amount of stuff here. It's kind of, again, sort of funny that we've got um, the job system in place. And uh, yeah, already. And that's something that Dots, again, has been waiting on for like four or five years. But uh, yeah, definitely nice to see. Some very nice stuff in here. And by the way, it can also be used in C Sharp, C++, or visual scripting. So you're not limited to just using one of the languages, the job system works for various different languages. Nice move. Uh, so that is Flax 1.2 release. What do you think of the Flax engine? What do you think of this release? Let me know, comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.